Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul and in this video, let's just see what React Native 0.59 brings to us, what upgrades it has, and how you can get started with React Native 0.59. So as we know, React Native is a way to build native mobile applications using React and JavaScript as your primary language for building the application. And React Native has just rolled out 0.59 update a couple of days back which includes some pretty exciting optimizations and new features. So starting off with hooks. So React Native has upgraded its React library to 16.8.3, which now includes hooks. So React has implemented hooks starting from React 16.8. And if you're someone who has no idea what hooks are, it basically in a nutshell allows your functional components in React to be acting to act as a stateful component. So I have a video link in the description. Go ahead and check it out. It basically gets you started with React hooks. All right, the second thing is finally React has upgraded its JavaScript core versions. And this was a big time. You know, this change was being awaited for a very long time. And what this basically means is the JavaScript which you write for React Native, the JavaScript which you actually write is not really compiled down to native code. It's, it's still run as JavaScript and it's communicated to the native operating system via host bridge. So what executes that JavaScript? On your browsers, on Google Chrome, for example, you have V8 as the JavaScript engine. React Native ships with its own JavaScript engine, which was called JavaScript Core, right? And it was pretty old. So what happened was the Babel, the Babel transpiler had to do a lot of work to make all of your code compatible and sometimes react native um, broke this uh, uh, kind of structure as well a lot of times so this is one of the things airbnb also mentioned why they were sunsetting react native at their place so essentially what that means is now with a new javascript core you as a developer don't really have to do anything special what would happen now is that you would get smaller javascript bundle sizes because babel has to do less optimization of your code because the new javascript core understands your es6 syntax you know the polyfills would be less in number performance gains obviously because a function implemented by polyfill or function implemented by the actual javascript renderer obviously has performance gains over the regular javascript one and google also had made 64-bit support for apks mandatory for developers starting from august 2019 so this was a step react native had to take anyway for it to make it compatible so that people can actually do production ready apps with it so react native now has 64-bit app support plus javascript core is upgraded so that's a very nice thing if you ask me finally we have inline resource fetching as well which pretty much just means in if you are a webpack guy you would know that this is dynamic loading but what happens now is that you can do a dynamic loading right here inside like if else statements or if certain action has happened then only you can lazy load that particular file right so you see right here you are just loading this very expensive.js file right here which might be expensive component only if a certain action is performed right so this cuts off your bundle size initially and once this is required, it would be dynamically loaded on the runtime and not during the compile time of the, you know, your application. This would not be fetched as a whole in your app bundle. React Native is also working on leaning its core, which is a fancy word of saying that React Native is decoupling its dependencies, which are not really used very often from its core, which is the actual framework of React Native, right? All that bridge and stuff. So React Native has already started work and it has done quite some work as well. So web view, async storage, sliders, things like these are actually decoupled completely. So you can actually install them from a different repository and include it from there instead of getting it directly from the React Native core, which by the way, right now is deprecated, but very soon would be removed in the coming releases, right? So. React Native CLI is also one of the things which is decoupled. So that's that. Then finally, you have a React Native upgrade upgrade. So React Native has worked on this one to actually make your projects easier to upgrade, right? 
So it's, a, it's actually a new way to upgrade your React Native projects. The old way was to use React Native Git upgrade, which is now removed, right? So do not really use this to upgrade to 0.59. Now the thing is, how would you upgrade to 0.59? So the first step you have to do, if you have an old project, um, then you have to follow this. If you have a new project, if you're starting off, just follow step one. So if you have an old project, update your React Native CLI or just React Native by doing npm install React Native at the rate latest, which is going to fetch React Native 0.59, right? Or maybe if you're using Yarn, you can do this, but I think most of you guys would be using npm. Then finally, inside your project, go to your project directory, open it, and inside it, run React Native upgrade, which is going to upgrade your project. Now, obviously, I would really recommend you to back up your project, first of all, in case the build fails and you go crazy because that is very likely to happen, right? Um, so, still, if you want to do it, you can do it with React Native Upgrade, but make sure you have a backup ready just in case. And if everything goes right, you should be upgraded to React Native 0.59. So, if you, if you look forward for 0.60, there's not really a lot of things right now which are disclosed, but uh, there's certainly one thing which improves React Native crash logs which are native and not JavaScript based. So React Native has a history that you can pretty much get a good measure of JavaScript crash logs, but not really the native crash logs. If something happens at the native level, React Native kind of uh, gives you random information. So that kind of is fixed in this PR, which is actually merged in the master branch as well. So that would be landed for sure in 0.6. Otherwise, React Native 0.6 RC1 is coming this week, so we're gonna see what's new in that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Fabric is not really something which uh, React Native developers are discussing on the release branch, but we know it's under the works. So yeah, we can just hope for the best and see when these guys can release that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for React Native. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in another one.